Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Hiking the Wainwrights. And welcome back to Thirlmere. Look at all these little cuties. So I've just parked up at Steel End Car Park there, and I'm heading up to a couple of fells that I've been dreading for quite a long time. High Tove and Armboth Fell. So I'm essentially heading back up onto the infinite swamp of despair. But there is a feature on that particular walk towards the end of the walk that is absolutely beautiful. And I can't wait to go and have a look at it. It's called Harrop Tarn. It's a really nice little area. So let's go and have a look at the map and see exactly where the route's taking us today. So from the Steel End car park, I'm going to head along the shore of Thirlmere heading towards Armboth. And I've got a bit of a choice here. I can either walk along the road or along the permitted path, depending on access. Once I get to Armboth, it's time to go uphill. I'm going to follow the course of Fisher Gill, and then I'm going to put in a bit of a dog leg and head towards the first fell of the day, Armboth Fell. Then squelchy walk over to the second fell, High Tove, before a long trudge along the spine of the central fells, heading in the direction of Blee Tarn. At which point I'll begin my descent into the dense woodland that surrounds Harrop Tarn. It's beautiful here. Then a quick walk down to the road, back along to the car park, and off to the pub. So it's five o'clock in the morning. It's a bank holiday weekend. It's also the weekend of the Cartmel races. The Lake District is going to be absolute pandemonium today. Awful. So that's why I've got up really early, three o'clock, got here, and starting the walk at five o'clock. It's the only way to beat the crowds and find somewhere to park. Now, speaking of parking, the original plan was to go and park at Dob Gill. However, they've closed the flipping road off. So United Utilities or whoever it is has closed the bottom end of Thirlmere Road off and the top so you can't get through either side now. So I had to park at Steel End and it just means a little bit of extra walking along the road before heading up onto the fell side. But to be honest with you, I can think of far worse places to be right now. It's beautiful, listen to those birds. And the sun is just coming up as well. And the fact that there's no traffic gonna be going up and down here today is quite nice as well. So I can just walk in the middle of the road and not worry about getting run over. Lovely, look at it, look at these surroundings. <laughs> now Wainwright himself says not to bother doing this fell. In so many words, just to paraphrase him a little bit, he said that walkers would be justified in not wasting their time and effort going up Amboth and Hightoff because it is, as he states in his books, a quagmire. But we have to do it. It is a Wainwright. This is hiking the Wainwrights, so it's got to be done. Got to shut up and just get on with it. So let's get on with it. So this is the car park I wanted to park at, Dobgill. And you can see there's a couple of motorbikes there. They would have got through the barrier down the side where I walked as well. So yeah, that's quite handy having a motorbike. I've done a lot of deforestation around here by the looks of it. Last time I came down here, this was all thick woodland. I mean, you can see they've planted new trees here. Look at this. How beautiful is this road? Now there is actually a permitted path down by the lake shore there that you can walk along and get off this road. Now that would have been useful before they closed it, before they, you know, put the barrier up because you can stay away from the traffic and it's, it'll be a nice leisurely walk down there, but it's quite a slow walk because it does wind around. But like I said, unnecessary now because this is just like a, a big glorified footpath. It's wonderful. Okay, I spoke too soon. It looks like they've closed it off completely. Let's go and have a read. I think I might have to go that footpath. This road is closed while we work to clear the storm damage. That was about four years ago. So, I want to get to Armboth. I'm just past Dobgill, and I want to get to Armboth and up to High Tove. So, I have to get on this footpath and whiz along. <sighs> Let's do it. So this is going to add extra mileage to the walk today. Um, not much more, but a little bit more unnecessary undulating and that kind of stuff and winding around. But, you know, it's not a lot I can do about it. So I'm going to stop mourning and I'm going to enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy it too. Let's go. It's pretty beautiful, actually. It's pretty beautiful. Oh, 
on the whole, this is a very nice, pleasant path. But I've walked through about a thousand spider webs so far. I'm covered in webs. I've got no idea what the hell is crawling on me right now. I don't even want to look. Ignorance is bliss. But yeah, nice path. Very picturesque. Let me spin you around. And obviously, got the sound of the lake just lapping up next to me here. Wonderful. Oh, I love all these ferns here. Look at these. They're really beautiful. Wow, there's a heck of a lot of damage here. Look at that down the road, there's no way you could drive down here. And behind me, so this is Hawes Point now. Come off the path, back onto the road. Got no choice but to go along the road now, which is great actually, because yeah, the path was pleasant, but it was slow. But I think I'm gonna get forced back onto the path again in a minute anyway. And I suspect probably through this gate here. Let's have a look. As we close the road off. I'm gonna have a wander down there in a minute, but first, let's go and check out this little viewpoint here. Quite nice. Not a bad place to come and sit and have your butties. Okay, so we've got a little bit of sunlight now hitting Steel Fell. Get yeah, first a proper look at Fellmere, and Helvellyn is up there somewhere. That's pretty beautiful, isn't it? What a view. Like I said, just sit on this little bench here and enjoy it all. Right, ain't got time for that. Let's get on down this road, see how far we can get before we have to get back on that path again. I hope we can get all the way down to Armboth, but we'll see. Let's go. Yeah, it's looking pretty messy. Wow, I can't believe the carnage down here. This can't be from Storm Arwen, surely. That was a couple of years ago. Oh dear. This is looking pretty blocked. Oh, there's a little cheeky path through it. Let's have a look. I don't like walking around things like this because you just don't know if something's going to collapse. I'm through. Wow, so many trees down. I must admit that I'm glad it's mostly pines that have fallen and not trees like this. This is a beautiful oak. Look at the shape of it, it's lovely. But where does that come from? Up there somewhere? Eek. It's pretty dangerous around here, I think. So the sun is just hitting the tips there. That's kind of where I want to be, up that way in the sun. Is it me, or does this not look anything like England whatsoever? You could be in the south of France here. Okay, this is Launchy Gill. Looking very dry at the moment, has to be said. Normally this is like a, a bit of a cascade. And it runs down into Thirlmere. And there's a little footbridge there, you might be able to see it through the trees. Quite a nice spot to get some photographs of waterfalls and that kind of stuff. This is a long and never-ending road. It just goes on and on and on. Oh, this is lovely. Finally in the sunlight. Oh, the smell of the lavender around here is absolutely beautiful. Wow. It's like walking through a perfume shop or something like that. You know, the airports when you you kind of herded through the um, duty-free section all the perfume. That was like that, but natural. Even if you don't bother going to do Amboth and High Tove and all that infinite swamp of despair, just come walk down here, it's absolutely stunning. That's an interesting looking dead tree. Wow, that must have been massive. It's like something out of Alien. Check out Hellvel in the background. A little bit of cloud on there. It's looking nice. Looks like they've been planting lots of little oak as well. That's a really good sign. There's an oak there. Looks like a, a birch or something there. Uh -huh. 
this is the other end of the, the barrier. Like massive Lego bricks. Right, I'm just approaching Armboth now. This is the car park just here. And I'll be heading off up to the left in a minute, picking up that path. I'm starting to go uphill at last. So I could have come in from the north and parked at Armboth car park here, but I still would have had this walk to do at the end of the day. I'd rather do it at the beginning of the day when I'm fresh and uh, yeah, get it over and done with and then I can concentrate on being out in the bog. Right, here we go. Here's our path. Beautiful, beautiful light. So Armboth Fell, where we're going today, takes its name from a village that used to be here, Armboth. And it's another one of the villages that was submerged by the Manchester Corporation when they turned Filmy into a reservoir. A bit like Hall's Water and uh, Mardale Green. So yeah, there was a village here. There's some remains of buildings and that kind of stuff down there by the shoreline and, and further up. But yeah, shame, isn't it? All these people were displaced just for water. I suppose we've got to drink, haven't we? I love these little pens. Something very Swiss about this area. So as we walk up, we're pretty much tracking Fisher Gill, which is just over here. And on the other side, we've got Cockrig Crags. It's Cockrig. I haven't got a cold or anything. <laughs> yeah, so we're kind of sandwiched between the two going up this cleft here. So pretty easy navigating. Yeah, lovely. Isn't it lovely here? It feels very alpine round here. I'm fairly sure that Wayne Wright in his book mentions this boulder and sure enough it's a whopper but I like this one too look at these almost perfect lines it's always a good idea to stop and look behind you because look at that view that's a great howl right in front of us so as you make your way further up this path and check the map you'll notice that the contours get a little bit closer and the path zigzags a little bit and that's this bit here so it's going to get a little bit steeper um only, only a tiny bit and then it gets a bit more gentle again oh, that's lovely that's a lovely fleeting view that we get as we zigzag along this path so it looks like most of the cloud has burnt off Helvellyn now. That's lower man there actually. Helvellyn's just behind it. So there might still be a little bit of cloud up there. Oh wow, check this out. Look at this oak tree. That is the perfect shaped oak tree. It's not oak, it's a sycamore or a maple. I always get them mixed up. <laughs> sycamore or maple. Wow, this thing is a beauty. Look at it. It's massive and from down there it looks so perfect, you know, perfectly round. But if you know what that is, let me know in the comments. I suspect it's a sycamore, but I could be wrong. I quite often am. <laughs> nice though, whatever it is. And it also kind of marks the end of the wooded area. We're now moving off up into the open fell side. So I'm gonna get a little bit further up where it levels off a little bit more and get the factor 50 on because that sun, even though it's only seven o'clock in the morning, is already fierce. Okay, time to cream up. Just gonna slap it on. Okay, all sorted. I don't know if I've got any sun cream all over my face and in my lugs and that kind of stuff, but to be honest with you, I'd rather look a bit silly and have bits of sun cream on, on display today than, um, than get burnt. I've met so many people in my life who've ended up getting tumours on the tops of their ears because they, they keep burning the tops of their ears there. All the noses, they get tumours on the noses or even on the, the scalp. So I'm a little bit paranoid about that. Factor 50 multiple layers oh this is lovely i mean it's lovely today on a beautiful dry warm still day 
a little hawthorn there that's been planted. But uh, yeah, on a rainy day, this is probably a living hell. It's not rained here for a couple of weeks. It's, everything's very dry. My garden's really dry at the moment. Wainwright says in his book that even in drought, it's a flipping swamp fest up here. So, so this path I've been on since Armboth is actually a, an ancient byway. This is where the people from Armboth, the village of Armboth, would head over to Wattenleth on the other side of High Tove. So High Tove is, well, pretty much a, a pass which again, as Wainwright mentions in his book, is quite unusual for a pass to go over the highest point. But there's a reason for that, because the lowest points are just, well, just swamps. All right, so looking over towards Helvellyn, that cloud is still there and you can see it cascading off. Uh, probably Nethermost Pike, I think that is. Yeah, that's wonderful. Oh, it does look like it's cascading up the hill. Like it's trying to cascade down, but the wind is blowing it back up. Isn't this just a wonderful place? Hands up who loves the Lake District. Let me know in the comments if you love the Lake District too. And tell you what, tell me what it is about the Lake District that you love so much. It could be the, the walks that you can do here. It could be the culture. It could be the, the history and the heritage. Just anything, dry stone walls, the herdies, definitely not the people. <laughs> of course the people, I'm kidding, I'm one of them. Yeah, let me know in the comments what it is you love about the Lake District. I think for me it's all of the above. It's the vibe. Can't quite put my finger on it. Not one thing anyway. It has a vibe. Oh, by the way, don't forget, like I have, because I completely forgot to mention it in the last video, but this photograph that's on the screen right now is available for this season and this season only. It's a limited edition print, printed on Hannah Mule photo rag paper. Absolutely stunning paper this is. Free worldwide delivery, and once this season is finished, this photograph will never be printed again. In fact, I'll just delete it off my computer. So it is special and it is limited. However, if you're not interested in buying my photographs, it's just not your bag, but you still want to support the channel, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com slash the black clan. For as little as two pounds a month, which is less than a cup of coffee, you'll be supporting this channel directly. And if you're not interested in Patreon or photographs, you can just head over to my website at blackcrag.uk and maybe pick up a t-shirt. Right, enough of that. I'm now on that dog leg section that's gonna take me up to Amboth, which is just there. You can see the summit there. So uh, yeah, let's get on. So far, so good. It's fairly dry, but you can see the cotton grass and you can see the areas that are no doubt normally very wet. Yeah, not too bad at all. I'd hate to do this on a rainy day. That would be absolute misery. All right, here we go. Just approaching the summit. Well, it's a summit, but it's not much of one, really. I'm with Wainwright on this, definitely. Uh, I wouldn't bother. I'd just tell people you've done it. <laughs> just don't bother doing it because it's pretty boring. I mean, even the views, you're not seeing all the way down to the bottom of the mountains. We're just seeing the tops. I mean, it looks amazing down to the south there looking towards Seat Sandal and Steel Fell. It's just completely shrouded in cloud. That looks nice. However, we can't see the full view. And looking out towards the west, again, we can't see everything. We're going to see little bits of stuff. It's a shame. It's such a wide plateau, this. That's why. Can't see Skidder. We can see a little bit of um, Blencathra there and a bit of High Rig as well. A bit of Raven Crag. Raven Crag, High Rig, Great Howe. And obviously, we can see quite a lot of that northern Hillville Massif, Clough Head and the Dodds. <laughs> Sounds like a 60s band or 50s band. And High Seat, that's where I was a few weeks ago on the Infinite Swamp of Despair video uh, with Waller Crag and everything. But now I'm heading over to um, High Tove, just there. Hopefully, you can see it, and hopefully, you can see that little grassy trod going up to it. So back along the dog leg, up to the top of there, and then I'm going to track along the spine of this ridge. Ridge is a bit of a stretch, but you know what I mean, of the hill, all the way down 
and I'm back into Harab Tan. It's really kicking off over there. It's such a shame, and it's kicking off over that way as well towards Borrowdale, but I just can't flip and see any of it. <laughs> I can just see the tops and the, and the clouds, but never mind. That sure is nice to look at. Okay, I've had a minor disaster. Just before heading off to High Tov there, I thought I'll do a little bit of a time lapse here. Because uh, it looked, in fact it looks even more amazing now, typically, <laughs> now I've stopped doing it. The cloud is ripping right down the valley. I don't know if you can see that. Wow, that's moving at some rate of knots. Anyway. I had my camera perched on my bag. I haven't, not, I haven't brought my tripod. Normally I like to bring a tripod for time lapses, but today I didn't. I came with a bit of a light setup. And I just used my bag. I turned my bag upside down. This here against the ground. Spent about 10 minutes doing that. And basically, in a nutshell, I was pressing the nozzle on my uh, bladder against the ground. I didn't realise, and I've just dumped two litres of water. All of it gone. All my water's gone. I've got nothing to drink all there, that big dark patch. And it dumped it right through the microphone, so this is soaking wet. I don't know if you can hear me properly. I don't know if it's going to be crackling all the way through this entire video now. I've got no idea. Just don't do time lapse. That's the, the, uh, the gist of it, I think, isn't it? <sighs> right. <laughs> Let's get on to High Tove. No more flipping disasters like that. Luckily, um, I've actually brought my uh, filter, water filter today. So what I'll do is I'll head over to Moss Hors Gill over by Harrop Tarn, just above Harrop Tarn. It kind of runs into, into the tarn itself. And hopefully there'll be enough water there to bit fill up my bladder again with the filter. So yeah, until then, I'm just gonna have to put up with having no water. I'll just suck it out of my microphone. <laughs> right, let's get on. Okay, here's the time lapse. As you can see, it is completely out of focus. I must have hit the focus ring on my bag somehow. This is why you use a tripod. I lost all of my water for this. Well, it's definitely a little bit soft on the foot here. This is all right. It's actually very cushioning. So as you get closer, this bit that looked like a nice green grassy trod going up to the top it becomes very apparent that actually it's just a bog it's just very wet ground with a darker green grass growing from it yeah pretty soggy hey here it is it feels like a lifetime ago since I said that. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I'm not even too sure if they are herdies. They looked a bit different. I don't know, maybe mixed with something else. Or maybe I've just become herdy blind. <laughs> just can't tell anymore. They all look like herdies. Anyway, approaching the summit of High Tove. Once again, it's not really much of a summit. You know? <laughs> it's a little lump along a ridge. And it's not even a very interesting ridge. I mean, it's looking very interesting out that way, out towards Helvellyn and um, Dollywagon. In fact, Dollywagon and Nethermost are completely gone. Steel Fell, gone. South Lakes, gone. <laughs> okay, high tove. What can I say? Just, uh, I think high tove. And I think Armboth were filler for his books. I mean, you can't even see Armboth from here now. It's just, just nothing, just a little hill with some crags on it. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I just got to get it. Rubbish. This is a rubbish, rubbish fell. Don't like it. The best thing about this fell are the Skylarks. <laughs> Love the Skylarks and that gate. That gate's quite impressive as well. So from here, it's all starting to open up. Grythill Pike all around, out that way, out towards the west. We've got uh, Honister Pass over there. Wow, it's looking quite busy. Some vans moving up or parked up or something on the way up. And then obviously looking out towards Great End and a bit of Ling Mel as well. And Bo S Pike Bo fell in the clouds. Eagle Crag's looking pretty impressive over there as well, actually. I'll be over there in a few weeks. Looking forward to that walk. I've got a nice one devised. Yeah, wonderful. Right, let's get off this flipping hill. I don't like it one bit apart from, like I said, the Skylax. So yeah, I'm gonna follow this fence pretty much all the way up to Shivery Knot. Shivery Man first and then Shivery Knot. 
Love that now. Shivery man. Ooh. Right, let's go. <laughs> All right, as I reach the lowest point between High Tove and Shivery Knot over that way, and just behind its bleed time, it's got very, very squelchy here. <laughs> so my feet, though are still dry because of the waterproof shoes, I can certainly feel the coldness of the water as my feet um, ooh, sink right in. Right, I went right in then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even on a, on a dry day like today, and like I said, it's been dry for weeks. It's just not rain for weeks. It's still very wet on the ground here and still quite arduous walking, actually. Just being careful, just picking my way through. Okay, this is Middle Crag just here. So I'm making good progress. But I am starting to get a bit thirsty. Eek. Now, it probably comes as no surprise whatsoever, but I haven't seen a single person yet today. I mean, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> Most people are just pulling up to the car park now at nine o'clock to start a walk. Uh, so it doesn't really surprise me, but I reckon there'd be quite a few people up on Helvellyn right now, up there. God, it'd be amazing up there actually today. I bet it's fantastic looking down to Striding Edge. Anyway, <laughs> distraction. But yeah, I think even later on today, at the peak of the day, the peak of traffic here, in this area, walking traffic, I mean, I still don't think there are many people here at all. It's, it's just, it's just not sexy enough. And it really isn't, it's flippant, it's not sexy at all. It's horrible, a miserable place, really. But I still kind of like it. It's that bleak, you know, bleak, but beautiful. Bleak, but beautiful. I actually have those t-shirts now in my shop. Go and check them out. I mentioned I was going to make them, I was joking, but I've made them. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to be in shade soon. The clouds are just rolling in really quickly from the north. Okay, shivery knot. I grippy enough, sort of. A little bit more uphill. And then when we get to that brow there, we're we'll looking down on um, Bleetan. Wow. Hey, this looks like it could be good light, you know. Oh, I'm so thirsty now, you know. I'm literally surrounded by water. It's everywhere. Water, water everywhere. I already dropped a drink. It's amazing. I mean, it's 20 past nine and it's warm. I'm sweating like mad. So all the water I did have this morning is gone. <laughs> There's always something for me to mourn about. Right, so the fence has come to a corner and going off in that direction. And Blee Tarn is just on the other side of there. So if you remember, Blee is Old Norse for blue. So Blee Tarn is blue tan. And today it probably will be blue. Uh, yeah, I can see a little bit of blue. And <laughs> Some tents around it. What a surprise. The brightest tents you've ever seen in your life. Help. <laughs> I'm stuck in the desert and I might die. I'm also a bit of a drama queen, <laughs> if you haven't already noticed. Some really freaky looking weather around at the moment. But I like it. I like it a lot. Right, let's get across this very odd looking style. What the f*** it? What do you do? Feels a bit rickety actually. Oh, that's not going to take my weight. Yeah, you need long legs for that one. Because <laughs> that was tricky. It's infinite. As tempting as that looks, I don't think I'm gonna bother. You know something, there aren't many walks that I go on where I think, flip an egg, I wish this would hurry up and end. <laughs> but I'm feeling that right now, just a bit. Do yourself a favor, if you're gonna do this, 
do it in winter when it's completely frozen. I mean, a proper hard winter. Do it then. It's better for the environment and it's better for your well-being, your mental well-being. Or better still, just don't do it at all. Do yourself the ultimate favour and just ignore this, this entire route. You don't need to come. You've been, you've been here virtually. I mean, it's just not getting any closer. Yeah, I can see a bit more of Bleed Tan now. Almost full view of it. Nice, isn't it? Quite a nice view of Great Gable and Green Gable there. And then obviously over to Hornister, we can see the main buildings there, the Hornister Mine buildings. We also see the track zigzagging up towards Fleetwith. But to the left of Hornister, the big black mass, that is Pillar. And you can actually see Pillar Rock as well. And the little ditty one on the right is Haystacks. Yeah, just continuing my little following the fence routine. And very soon I'll be leaving the fence and dropping down towards Arab Tarn and hopefully a running gill. Isn't it weird how in the space of about 20 minutes, since I was on Shivery Knot and all the clouds are coming in, they've all broken up. It's all changed again. Broken up. Some very interesting ones. It's looking super interesting out towards Fairfield. That's Fairfield there, right in the clouds. That's looking amazing. That's actually looking up towards oh, Cofa Pike. Okay, just approaching the crossroads. Go that way, Harp Tarn. Go that way, Blee Tarn. Here's the gate that takes you down to Blee Tarn. And there's my first other human of the day. Isn't that a beautiful view? Again, it just doesn't look like England. This could be Scotland, actually, thinking about it. Oh, this is beautiful. This is definitely making up for the bog. Definitely much darker in the woods and much cooler as well. Very nice, though. Some, some old ruins here, look. Sure what this was, sorry. Just drag you through the trees. Yeah, probably a little barn of some description, a little stone building. There's loads of just dilapidated old buildings in this area, old dwellings from a bygone era. This is lovely, look at this. <laughs> he fell on my ass. <laughs> oh. Okay, I almost did almost fall on my ass and I almost stood on my glasses in the, in the process as well. Oh, look at this. Look how dark this is. Wow, it's getting darker. You probably can't even see anymore. How's that? Is that a bit better? Back in Canada, it's getting even darker. Look at this, love it. I don't love this fallen tree, but I love the look of it all. Well, I'm really pleased to see that it's all still a very thick and dense woodland. I was worried when I saw it from the bottom that they have been chopping trees down and wind's been blowing trees down, but thankfully not. And here is that gill. So I think I'll drop down a little bit closer in a second. It's certainly sounding promising. Quite a bit of water flowing there. So let's just pop down a bit further. It sounded like it's flowing quite strongly here. Look at this. Wow. Little magical dell. Yeah. We've got water. So I'll show you the filter. Okay, I've got myself an almost perfect tap. I can just fill up this, what we call the dirty bag. This is the dirty water. And then I'm going to put on the filter itself. So this is the Sawyer Squeeze Micro. And we've got a special little nozzle here, and I'll show you what that's for now. Okay, here's the clever bit. All I'll do now is take the nozzle off my bladder, put that down somewhere safe, 
and then this nozzle you shove in like so and all I do now is just squeeze it in and that is pretty much it take that off put that back on done let's pop that back in there and try not to <laughs> spill it all again fantastic bit of kit I think this is essential for summer hiking I wouldn't go on any summer hike without taking my filter with me so as you can see it's coming very handy today I would have been snookered if I'd been doing a longer walk I would have been well haven't I probably call it off and do a shorter walk so yeah it's a lifesaver and really cheap as well so what I'll do is I'll put a link in fact I won't put a link in the description just head over to blackcrag.uk slash mygear I've got all my gear listed there um, there's links to this there's links to all the gear that I use so uh, go and check that out Mm. Oh, beautiful, ice cold and clean mountain water. Doesn't get much better than that. Right, let's get the hell out of here. I've been eaten alive by midges. I've just discovered them here. So let's get out of here quick. Right, let's get back on the path. That literally takes five minutes tops. Like I said, wonderful bit of kit and essential, I think especially in this part of the world where people are urinating and defecating in our watercourses and there's giardia all over the place all the towns are just filled with it it's nasty I wouldn't drink any of the water straight out of those places I wouldn't even drink that straight out of there either I can't believe I've not seen anybody since that that fella up there on the fell it's one person all day. It's 20 to 11. And here we are, now approaching Harrop Tarn. Beautiful. Isn't it lovely? Absolutely beautiful. And to be honest with you, I was a little bit apprehensive about um, <laughs> About the state it was going to be in because I'd heard a lot of people saying you know kids have been coming up here and having barbecues and camping leaving all the rubbish here and all that kind of stuff you know oh no oh it's such a special place this but it looks all right oh I love it I love this I love paths like this I love places like look how dense these woods are I mean there's literally no light going in there god knows what lives in there <laughs> oh look there's lily pads and everything. Look at this for super cute. Who wouldn't want to walk here? Beautiful. Okay, so there has been a lot of deforestation work here, but as you can see, they've planted a lot of new trees. Lots of little cute ones. Unless they're self-seeding, but I don't know. I think they're probably planted. I can't believe I've not seen a single person at Harrop Town. I thought it'd be chock a block. Isn't it funny how it's a completely different day now? Totally overcast and rubbish. Not a, there's no sun hitting any land anywhere now. So I definitely had the best time of day, I think. Um, yeah, lucky. But, almost back at the road. There's the gate, there's the second gate onto the road. And it's literally, what was it, seven minutes down the road there to the car park. So, yeah. Damn it, <laughs> too early. Too early for the pub. Yeah, car park is just behind those trees there. Okay, let's get to the van and then the pub. But first, why don't you give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and got something from it. 
and even if you haven't just give it a like anyway it's much appreciated thanks pub hey here it is <laughs> crag ranch maybe yeah one day Thanks.